Let's look quickly um, in uh, St. John chapter number 2. And I want you to know something concerning the Word of God. You, the Lord wants to use you to make an impact. He's using you to make an impact. It's important now that we make an impact on our world, on our society, on our nation, on our community. We got to do more than just shout and dance and speak in other tongues. But we've got to make an impact on this nation and upon this world. And the way we're going to make that impact is through the integrity that God gives us from his word. See, it's a difference. The scripture teaches us that holiness is a difference. God has called us to live different lives. We can't live like the world and then expect to win the world and we live in like the world. You can't be in the club Friday and Saturday night and then jump up in the upper room on Sunday and I'm going to shout, no, you, that, that, that's not the integrity that God is asking for. But God wants a people that believe and live in holy. On their job, in the home, in the school, he wants us to live a holy life and a separate life under him. I want us to look at this. Uh, you know this uh, story here in St. John chapter number 2. This story is um, the story, uh, the true story, uh, of when Jesus went to the wedding there at Canaan of Galilee. You know there that um, sometimes wedding celebrations lasted a great long time. And Jesus goes to this uh, celebration of marriage here in St. John chapter number 2. And uh, the Bible says that here in uh, St. John 2, that um, the wine at the wedding ran out. And uh, the scripture says that um, uh, Jesus' mother said to those that were the governors of the feast, whatever my son tells you to do, that's what you need to do. So oftentimes we think that it's the real deep and mystical things that are going to get us over. But you know, something can change today in your relationship with God if you would just come to a place of obedience. Here's an answer for even those that are in ministry. Whatever Jesus says do, do that. We have people who are going to church growth seminars trying to figure out what to do with the church and how to grow churches. We are living in a time where most of the young men are only celebrating those who have large congregations, who have big budgets. They're, they're celebrating people who have big ministries now, and they go to these conferences because they want to see, how can I have the same thing? What we have is a spirit of covetousness and a, and a spirit of, co of, of competitive, I'm going to compete with him, and I'm going to outdo him, and who know the most Hebrew, and who know the most Greek, and I'm going to outdo this person. But I'm going to give you the antidote for real church growth. Whatever Jesus says to do, Whatever he tells you to do, then you do it. Don't try to be the status quo. Don't try to preach what you're hearing on the Word Network. Don't try to be like other people. But whatever Jesus tells you to do, do that. That's spiritual growth. That's spiritual growth in your, in your natural life. That's spiritual growth in the church. Listen, believe me, beloved, you can't win just doing your own thing. But God wants to call you to a level of obedience. If you want to see a change, if you want to make an impact, obey whatever he says do. Whatever Jesus says do, do it. Listen to me, if people reject you, do it. If you don't find yourself where you don't have a friend, do it. If Jesus said do it, do it. She says to those governors of the feast, whatever he says to do. To those that are concerned, whatever he says do, do it. That's an answer. Whatever he tells us to do, that's what we ought to do. And uh, Jesus, uh, you know, he says to his mother, you know, what have I to do with you? Uh, and uh, then he says, you know, uh, bring me water pots. And when uh, they bring him the water pots, the water pots are empty. That's what religion is. Religion without Jesus is empty. Now listen to me. I'm not talking about uh, you can't have religion without Jesus. Of course you can have it without Jesus. But without Jesus, religion is nothing. It's dead. It's empty. 
And let me tell you, not just Jesus, but the real Jesus of the Bible. The Word of God, the real Christ, Jesus. Religion is dead without him. But I'm here to tell you, the sin is not in your gospel. Your gospel is not a true gospel. Because the Bible says in Romans that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the workers of iniquity who suppress the truth with their unrighteousness. You can't have a message that don't have sin in it. Because the world don't need seven ways to success. They don't need eight ways to get out of poverty. The world needs a word that's true and from God. God. And when you subtract Jesus Christ, if Jesus said sin, then you can say sin. And if God called you to preach and you can't say adultery, you can't say fornication, you can't say lasciviousness, you can't say homosexual, you can't say nothing because you don't want to offend nobody. You're not preaching no gospel. The gospel that you preach got to bring people out of guilt. It got to bring people out of sin. It's got to bring people out of shame. And you got to attack the problem. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes we're hurling people up, but if it's not, you know, you can't preach success. And if you, if you, if you go to the parking lot and you don't have your park, don't get the wrong attitude. Just have the right attitude. And if you have the right attitude, when you come again, there your park may be. Uh, you know, my daughter dropped her ice cream cone, and I told her, I'm going to give you double for your trip. Just have a good, that ain't going to do nothing. Then you get to the end of that and say, now I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. But the Bible says, how can they believe on him of whom they have not heard? If all you didn't told me, when you write a book, I know I'm getting in a lot of trouble, but when you write a book and you say, this book worked just as good for unsaved people as it worked for saved people. The principles work that that's a the devil is a lie Jesus said the kingdoms of this world he taught he made a difference he distinguished between the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of Christ there's a difference in that kingdom and when you're born again of the spirit there's some benefits there's some things that belong to us because we're in the kingdom of God and have come out of the kingdom of darkness that don't belong to those that are in darkness it don't belong to those that don't name the name of the Lord the word of God don't work the same I heard him say he didn't write the Bible to the whole world. I heard him say, hear, O Israel, the word of God is written to us.